you talk to the people who are who want to legalize drugs, the sort of uh, they call it reforming drug policy, the ones who uh, uh, want to change the policy. Uh, they, t they spend almost all their time talking about what's wrong with what we've got now and almost no time talking about what they're going to do. They don't have a program. They don't have any way to do it. They don't have any way to define what they're going to do. How are you going to do that? And for example, one of the things that they're talking about is heroin clinics. They're going to give heroin. Well, what actually happens when you have heroin clinics? We've got some in, in uh, uh, Canada. We've got a few in Europe. Well, I'll tell you what happens. You get a few hundred people who are taking heroin in a clinic somewhere and never carrying any out, what in the world do you think that's going to do to the drug problem in any community? Absolutely nothing. It's irrelevant. You'd have to make heroin available to carry out. You'd have to make heroin available so people could do it whenever they wanted to do it. You can't do that because it would spread the disease. It would spread the, the heroin use. So it, it's, all, it, it's all smoke and mirrors on the other side. They don't come forward. Which drugs? Who are they going to give it? How are they going to set the dose? Uh, who's going to pay for that? How are they going to decide who's eligible for it? They can't answer any of those questions. Well, to sum it up, legalization of drugs is a, is a terrible idea. It's, 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 it's been said so often that it almost sounds like it's a, a normal expression or a, a cogent expression. <laughs> Um, it's actually uh, a terrible idea because uh, it would increase the number of users and, and, and that's, the, that's the one solitary universal agreement that I think everybody has, whether they're pro-drugs, anti-drugs, for legalization, against legalization, uh, they will all agree, everyone, that if you were to legalize drugs, you would have more users of drugs. Any kind of sensible drug control regime is going to continue our prevention programs. Of course we're going to have prevention programs. Cigarettes are legal and we have programs to discourage cigarette smoking. Alcohol is legal and we have programs to discourage drunkenness and public and, 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 and driving under the influence. We have programs to encourage doctors to you know screen their patients you know, when they come in for ordinary physicals about the risks of alcohol abuse. All of that would be a part of any logical drug control regime. There was a Zogby poll done a year ago last December where they asked one question. If heroin and cocaine were made legal today, would you try them? Less than six-tenths of one percent said they would try them not exactly a groundswell of new drug users. I think the poll is worthless, to be honest with you. That, I think that kind of a question is worthless. Uh, you know, if you could get a gun, would you go out and kill people? Uh, if you could get a gun, would you carry it as a secret weapon? Come on. No. You're going to get the answer that, that they think is the good answer. Uh, but you, have to, you have to realize what the world would be. You know, the drugs are legalized. And then people start advertising them something called commercial free speech in this country. Uh, just think of what Philip Morris could do with marijuana. My assumption is that what would happen is that the number of people who use drugs would increase and that the diversity of drugs that are being used would increase, but that the negative consequences of that drug use would decrease substantially. In other words, the number of people dying from overdoses or, or being involved in criminal activity or dying from HIV or Hep C or other diseases associated with illegal drug addiction, those things would drop very dramatically, I believe. And what you would see is more people using a greater diversity of drugs, or well, that may be happening anyway as we move into a new world in which pharmaceutical companies and illegal chemists are producing more drugs every, every year. Legalizing drugs will drastically reduce crime in our society. First off, the homicide rate, I am sure, will go down. These killings, these drive-bys, these things are connected with drug marketplace disputes, not with people being high on drugs. Also, the price will drop drastically. So the ideas of people committing thefts in order to buy drugs and things like that, that will kind of go away. Secondly, there'll be a huge decrease in crime because we won't be arresting drug dealers anymore. I mean, 50% of our jail cells right now are filled in this country, the largest prison population on the planet. 50% of these cells are filled by nonviolent drug offenders. The majority of drug-related crime is violent crime, rape, assault, and battery 
uh, murder, property crime, stealing money to buy drugs. Uh, that's the majority of, of crime. We did a study here that shows that 80% of the people in prison have drug and alcohol problems of one kind or another. So let me round it out at 2 million. It's more than 2 million. Let's say 2 million people in prison. 1.6 million are either drug addicts or regular drug users, alcohol addicts or alcohol abusers, uh, have stolen money to buy drugs, have committed their offense when they were high, or share some combination of those characteristics, or have violated the alcohol and drug laws. Almost no crimes occur because somebody used drugs and then went off and because of the use of that drug committed a crime. They commit crimes to get the money to pay for these drugs. They commit crimes in the act of producing, selling, transporting, all those things. And they commit these violent crimes to, to further their market capabilities. You know, Al Capone was not high on alcohol when he ordered the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And these Mexican drug cartel drug lords were not high on heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine when they ordered the murder of, now it's over 7,500 people along the northern border of Mexico since the beginning of last year. They weren't high. This is just the way you do business in an illegal atmosphere. One third of arrestees are arrested for drug-related activities, but 68% of arrestees test positive for illegal drugs. So it's not the drug crime that does it, it's the crime because of the drugs that is what we're after. So that is a gross conservative underestimate of the impact of drugs when you only talk about the criminal activities directly related to drug trafficking. It's the crime that's committed to get the drugs and because you're on the drugs that count in terms of the disaster to American society that costs us some $400 billion a year in social costs.